What's up, people? It's your belief. And in the last video, I gave you three important rules to follow when it comes to winning more gunfights. But now it is season four, and I'm going to give you guys more detailed tips about how to win 1v1s and how to play those, and also how to get more squad wipes by yourself and even possibly with a few of your teammates. If you guys like this video, do me a favor, smash that like button. Go ahead and comment down below that you like this video or just comment down below. I'll try to respond back to you. If you guys want more tips, go ahead and like I said, leave those comments because that's the only way I know you guys are enjoying the video and that you guys want to see a specific video up next. And then if you guys can also smash that like button if you guys found value in this video. This is totally free and it helps me out a whole bunch with the YouTube algorithm. It gets this video out to more people and it helps me out a whole bunch. So let's go ahead and get the video started. So like I said, those are general tips about how to start your engagements in these gunfights. But now I'm going to go into more detail and give you guys three important rules that I try to think about when I'm going into these gunfights. So the first one's going to be trigger discipline. I know a lot of people where as soon as they see the en enemy, they just want to start firing right away, which is a possibly good thing, you know, but then it, it majority of the time backfires. All right. So if you guys see an enemy, you guys got to make sure that you guys take the time to know that if you're going to start shooting the enemy, there's no one on your left, on your right, up on top of the building, watching that their teammate or something. And then also you definitely want to know that you're going to be able to either get it down or crack their armor. Okay, and that leads to the second tip, which is create an opening. So like I said, breaking armor or having a down, it's super important because if you're having a 1v1, like you're playing solos, that means you're going to be able to push if they break their armor because now they're panicking and they're putting on their armor or they're going to have to reposition and you're they're low, but you're still nice and healthy with your armor plates. So that's super important. If you're playing trios, and you're by yourself or you're with your squad but you're like trying to make a play you gotta know right it's better to get it down than an armor break but you gotta be able to choose which one of those two things are the best choice in that position so what i mean by that is if you end up getting an armor break it can be or it cannot be a good chance to push in i highly recommend that if you're playing one versus three and you're trying to find an opening the best thing you can do is get it down if you get an armor break that's nice it gives you the chance to reposition or find another area to move to but it does not give you the green light to push in if you get it down that gives you a higher opportunity to push in without gaming getting heavily punished so that leads to my third tip, which is creating a tempo of, or pacing in the gunfight. So this is super important. So once you get into the gunfight, it's really important to know how fast you want to play the fights. So if you're playing solos, it's a lot easier because you're only controlling your tempo or your pacing with the enemy team. But if you're playing with your squad mates, it's a little more difficult because your squad mates have the, a mind of their own, of course. So sometimes guys are going to be pushing, guys are going to get down, but you just have to remember how you're going to play the tempo or pacing of the gunfight. So out of these three tips, the hardest tip for you to learn is going to be understanding the pacing of fights. The reason why is because you, you're going to have to engage in fights. That's the only way to get better at understanding how to control the pacing of the fight and understand when to push and when not to push is if you get into more engagements. So you're going to be super frustrated when you try to figure out the tempo because you're, you're going to end up dying. You're going to end up saying like, oh, my God, I can't believe there was a guy on this corner. I can't believe I didn't hear this guy push me from the left. All this other stuff that is all tempo and that's all you trying to figure out the pacing of gunfights and that's why that last tip is going to be the hardest one to understand and learn and i'm still figuring out how to use my pacing and tempo to my advantage in gunfights but if you watch pro players play like joe or z laner they usually play duo quads or even joe he plays solo trios solo quads and if you notice right they're always in control of the tempo or pacing of the gunfight in each gunfight that they get into. And that's super important because if you are in control of the gunfight 
then you are able to control how you're going to move and get around each one of your enemies in that squad. So this doesn't mean you're going to go in and go as fast and as crazy as you can and ego chow everyone. It's, it is important to ego chow everyone. Okay. But you have to know when to ego chow and when to play slow. And this also doesn't mean you're going to be crouch walking around corners. That is not what I mean. What it means is that when you're in these gunfights, if you have the opportunity, you're going to take the second to slow down, listen for audio cues, position yourself and use your movement. These three rules that I explained in the last video to have a better outcome for you when you play into these small little skirmishes. And that would give you the ability to win more gunfights and get more kills. All right, so I know I just gave you guys all a whole bunch of information, but now let's go ahead and look at some clips, play it all the way out, and then we'll play it one more time and I'll give you guys all my explanations about my mindset and how I was trying to play the tempo of these gunfights and also explain to you how I tried to create openings. Thank you. Oh my god. Teammate has been cleared for redeployment. Okay. Oh my god. No fucking way you know I was there, bitch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ready to Jordan? Oh. No. You changed on me. Back at I'm back now. I'm kind of safe. They're fighting right there. I'm safe. Like. You good over there, John? No. I, I got it. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Just lit over there. I got it. I got it. All right. So in this clip here, I just came back from the gulag after getting three kills Fighting off right rip, here, which is pretty dope. I'm calling out. I think they're fighting there. I'm trying to land somewhere relatively safe where I don't think people are going to be. And then right here, my tips from before, right? Which is information, positioning, and movement. Okay, that's from my last video. Here, I'm looking at the minimap already. I am also looking for guns. But here on the minimap, we see the red dot over here. Uh, the arrow is up, meaning that he's on an elevation higher than me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position, what I'm gonna do is position myself. To be able oh to God. engage in this gunfight so my best position is to push up a little bit more here the reason why i did that is because he could be running to my green mark or he's gonna be running to the left which he ends up running to this left here and this right here is a perfect example of trigger discipline is i wasn't shooting right away if i shot right away i would have never known that there was an enemy on my left but because i waited just a little bit longer I was able to position myself. And now I know that there's at least two squads here. So I look back and he gets down by the enemy. So this gives me the opportunity to push in that general direction of where the enemy could be. So he was, I don't know, up here in this area. And somehow okay. he heard my footsteps. So he was already waiting for me, which is pretty impressive. I give him that. I was definitely not expecting that he knew that I was there. So no I called him out on his bullshit. And then here, if you didn't notice, my my previous gun, I only had 16 rounds left. No fucking way, you know I was okay. Bitch. So I switched it for the Milano. The reason why you see everyone run ARs and submachine guns is because that is it gives you the best opportunity to fight gunfights mid range and close range. So I'm gonna switch this whatever new gun is called for the Milano to help me with the close uh, oh, no. quarter engagements. And then right here, super important from my last video, which is movement. I'm shoulder peeking and armoring because I know that this guy was down, but I don't know if he died yet or not. And I need to put on an armor because I have no more armor. And here I see there's two guys. He's up again. I'm like, oh shit. To control the tempo, what I'm going to do is I'm a plate and walk out of the warehouse. There's some people who will plate and play in the warehouse. That's not controlling the tempo. You're giving the tempo to the enemy. Okay. This is why you always have to move around and play and be as random as you can to confuse the enemy. So here I am. I close that door as well for audio cues. If while I'm pushing this way and one rushes in through this door, I'm going to hear that audio cue of that door slamming open. 
and I'll know to look right or continue looking at my left. But obviously, they didn't push through. Here, I was able to catch this guy off guard because he still assumed that I was over here. And I ended up dropping him very fast. So this is my opening. All right. And what I'm trying to do to control the tempo some more is to put in some more shots into his teammate. This will give, uh, I guess, his his teammate more pressure to end the gunfight to be able to res his teammate. Put in those gun, gun or put in those shots. Scoot back. All right. Play it a little bit slower because that guy's gonna bleed out. He dies. And I'm still peeking. Right, so this guy, he was on this left hand side. So obviously, what a good enemy team would do is try to pinch you the best they can. So I'm assuming that his teammate's gonna rush this way, uh, on this opposite side of the warehouse, to try to engage on me. Obviously, he didn't, and I repeaked here. Right here was a kind of sketchy spot because I could have tried to beam him with a Milano, or I could have go back and switch to my AR, which is the better option. Right here, I did not want to Eagle Child with my Milano because that range is not for SMGs. So what I do, I slide back, right, to give me a little bit more movement. I switch to my AR in the middle of sliding, and I push forward. I got you it. see that? So that's one example of how I control tempo, how I had trigger discipline, and also using other people's downs and my downs to my advantage in winning this gunfight. So I hope you guys learned something from this video and found value in it. If you guys did, do me a favor, smash that like button and also show this to your squad mates, all right? If you guys learn something from it, they'll definitely learn something from it too. That'll make you better, make them better, make your whole squad better, make you guys all a lot more sweaty against me. And that's, that's just awesome. You know what I mean? The better you guys get, the better we all get. Go ahead and smash the like button. Comment down below if you enjoy this video. And if you want to find out more things about Warzone, go ahead and subscribe if you guys want to see more of my content. Good luck in Warzone, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Uh, one went, one went oh, pussy.